Hello friends, welcome to Simplified Biology. Today's topic is seed development in flowering plants. Now, after fertilization, that is post fertilization, the ovule develops into the seed and the ovary develops into the fruit. During seed development, the primary endosperm cell having the primary endosperm nucleus divides to form the endosperm while the zygote divides to form the embryo. So the first step for seed development is formation of endosperm. So we'll start with endosperm development. The primary endosperm cell divides to form the endosperm. Endosperm in angiosperms is triploid as it is formed due to triple fusion. It has stored food for the developing embryo. There are three types of endosperm development of which the most common is the nuclear type. In the nuclear type, the primary endosperm nucleus undergo free nuclear divisions. Means only karyokinesis occurs, no cytokinesis. The nucleus divides but the cytoplasm does not divide, forming multinucleated cytoplasm. This diagram shows the multinucleated cytoplasm. This multinucleated cytoplasm then becomes peripheral due to the development of a large vacuole in between. After which cytokinesis occurs or wall formation takes place from the outer to the inner side that is from the periphery towards the center making the endosperm cellular. Best examples of nuclear type are coconut, maize, wheat, rice, sunflower. The coconut example we see it in daily life. The coconut milk or the coconut water which is highly nutritious is the multinucleated cytoplasm and the white coconut that we eat is the cellular type. Second is the cellular type where each nuclear division is followed by cytokinesis. So new cells are formed directly. You can see this diagram. Example, the Tura, Petunia and Balsa. Third is the Helobial type or the mixed type. It's the mixture of cellular and Helobial type where the primary endosperm cell divides to form two unequal cells means it behaves as the cellular type dividing to form two cells larger one is towards the micropyle and the smaller one is towards the chalaza these two cells then start behaving in the nuclear way means first karyokinesis occurs only forming multinucleated cytoplasm which then becomes cellular. This is seen only in the helobial order of monocots. Endosperm has stored food for developing embryo. So during embryo development, the endosperm gets utilized. Seeds in which the endosperm is completely utilized are without endosperms. Such seeds are referred as non-endospermic or exalbuminous seeds. Example, pea, bean, sunflower, groundnut. While in some seeds, the endosperm is not completely utilized, hence it persists in the seed. The endosperm persists in the seed. Such seeds are known as endospermic or albuminous seeds. Example, castor wheat, maize, rice, coconut. 
after the endosperm development it is the embryo which develops so next is embryo development the zygote divides to form the embryo first we will study embryo development in dicots the zygote first divides transversely to produce two cells in a apical cell that grows towards the chalaza and outer basal cell that grows towards the micropyle the basal cell divides to form the suspensor suspensor pushes the apical cell into the endosperm and it is also hostorial in nature means it absorbs the stored food present in the endosperm and provides it to the developing embryo while the apical cell will divide to form the embryo the apical cell first divides by two vertical walls at right angles to each other to form four cells these four cells then divide transversely forming eight cells the eight cells divide once again forming 16 cells these 16 cells then divide periclinally means parallel to the outer surface separating the outer dermatogen from the inner embryonal mass dermatogen forms the epidermis of the complete plant body now let's see the embryo development in dicots this is the zygote that divides to form two cells of which the basal cell increases in size and then divides to form the suspensor this suspensor pushes the embryonal cell into the endosperm due to division of the embryonal cell first a globular structure is seen which then becomes heart shaped next torpedo and finally this is how the mature embryo is seen as the embryo develops the suspensor starts drying the mature embryo consists of two cotyledons with the plumule lying here hypocotyle radical so this is how the embryo is so this is a fully mature dicot embryo which consists of two cotyledons lying at the center is the plumule below the plumule this is the hypocotyle next the radical and the root cap now inside the ovule this is how the embryo grows this is the suspensor the radical hypocotyle plumule and the cotyledons the cotyledons are towards the chalaza end while the radical is towards the micropylar end and this is how a fully mature embryo is placed inside the ovule the hypocotyle plumule cotyledons and the root tip 
dicot seed. So this is how a dicot seed is. These are the two cotyledons with a covering seed coat. The region where the micropyle is present, a small pore can be seen, above which lies the hilum where the funicle gets attached to the ovule. And when the seed is opened up, the two cotyledons, the embryonal axis, pumule towards the upper side and radical towards the lower side. Next, embryo development in monocots. The starting is the same. The zygote first divides transversely to produce two cells, inner apical cell and outer basal cell. The basal cell does not divide further but increases in size to form the suspensor. This is the suspensor. While the apical cell first divides transversely to form two cells, which then divide forming three cells, of which the terminal cell forms the globular structure that will develop into the cotyledon, below which the second cell forms the pumule, and the third one forms the radical. A fully matured monocot embryo appears to be this, where a single cotyledon is present, which is referred as cutellum. The embryonal axis has the shoot apex, that is the pumule, which has a protective covering called the coleoptile. The radical lies towards the lower side, surrounded by root cap. And they too have a protective covering called the coleoriza. A rudimentary cotyledon can be seen, which is referred as epiblast. So, this is a monocot seed. In the transfer section of the seed, you will find that the major part of the seed is occupied by the endosperm. While the embryo lies obliquely at this place. This part is the embryo having the single cotyledon scutellum, pumule, radical with the protective covering coleoptile and coleoriza. The outermost layer of the endosperm is the aluron layer which has hydrolytic enzymes surrounding which is the seed coat and the fruit wall. Well, this is the longitudinal section of the monocot seed. At the center lies the embryo surrounded by endosperm which occupies main part of the seed. During seed formation, the integuments of the ovule, they harden and form the seed coat which Consists of two parts, outer thick testa and inner thin tegmen. While the micropyle present on the integuments appear as a spore in the seed, which facilitates entry of oxygen and water during seed germination. Now, as the seed matures, the water content reduces and the seed becomes relatively dry due to which the metabolic activity slows down and the embryo becomes inactive entering into a state of dormancy. The seed being dormant is very important for agriculture. During development of endosperm, the nucellus gets crushed. In some seeds, remnants of nucellus, that is leftovers of nucellus, are present. 
they are referred as perisperm. They can be seen in black pepper and beet. Now, as the embryo develops, the ovary forms the fruit. When the ovary forms the fruit, it is referred as true fruit. And in the meantime, the wall of the ovary becomes the fruit wall referred as pericarp. Example of true fruits are mango, guava, orange. When parts other than the ovary forms the fruit, it is referred as false fruit. Example apple, where the thalamus forms the fruit, strawberry, where the complete inflorescence forms the fruit, and cashew, where the cotyledon is the fruit. Fruits that develop without fertilization are referred as parthenocarpic fruits, the best example of which is banana and which is seedless. Last, viability of seeds means the time till they would remain functional or they are able to germinate. There are few species which, in which the seeds remain viable for just few months, while in a larger number of species, they are viable for several years. And the OS oldest viable seed known is that of Lupinus articus, which was excavated from Arctic tundra. It had 10,000 years of dormancy. And a recent record of 2,000 years of dormancy is seen in the seeds of Phoenix dactylifera, that is, date palm. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for watching.